Hi, I'm Chris Rowley, and I'll be giving a video summary of a paper published in the Journal of General Physiology, where we use molecular dynamic simulations to investigate barium blockades of potassium channels. The channel we chose for the study was KCSA, which is a uniquely well-characterized potassium channel. Potassium permeates through these channels at a much faster rate than sodium. This selectivity is enforced by a narrow filter where the four subunits of the protein meet to form ion binding sites. In these sites, the ions are coordinated by carbonyls from the protein backbones. We label these sites S0 to S4. Because barium has a similar ionic radius to potassium, but double the charge, barium ions will bind to the selectivity filter of potassium channels and block the passage of other ions. Because these blocks occur on the millisecond time scale, they can be measured using single channel recordings, and these data can be used to determine the kinetic parameters of barium permeation. The really fascinating thing about these barium blockades is that potassium ions in the external solution will extend the duration of a barium block, but sodium has no effect. What this suggests is that one of the external sites of the filter must be thermodynamically selective for potassium, and when the potassium is bound, it prevents barium from permeating out of the filter. To look at this, our first order of business was to look at the free energy of binding potassium ion from solution when barium is present in S2. The curve in blue shows the potential of mean force as a function of the position of the lock-in potassium ion with respect to the filter. We see a minimum for potassium binding in S0, but potassium cannot bind in S1 because the electrostatic repulsion with the adjacent barium ion would be too high. So potassium can't occupy sites adjacent to barium. So what we're left with is a scenario where potassium binding in S0 prevents barium from translocating from S2 to S1. And this is surprising because S0 is a wide site that's open to the solvent, and previous computational studies had concluded that this site does not bind potassium particularly strongly or selectively. To look at this possibility anyways, we calculated the two-dimensional PMF for barium moving from S2 to S1 when there's either potassium or sodium external to it. In these plots, the x-axis corresponds to the position of the barium ion, the y-axis corresponds to the position of the lock-in ion, and the color gives the free energy of that particular arrangement of ions. Surprisingly enough, we see that the PMF is selective for potassium when it's locking barium into S2, and this is the region we see in the lower left, and so this is at least reasonably consistent with what has been observed. To go a step further and estimate a rate of barium translocation, we can reduce the two-dimensional PMF uh, to two surfaces, giving the free energy of the system as a function of the position of the barium ion. One system corresponds to the scenario where barium is locked into S2 by an external ion in S0, and a second surface where there is no external ion. The mean force experienced by the barium is a linear combination of the mean force under these two regimes. For our purposes, we can consider two limiting cases. When the external concentration of the lock in ions is zero, we see a barrier of around 15 kilocalories per mole. Using Grothein's rate theory, we calculated a rate of roughly of 52 reciprocal seconds. This is in reasonable agreement with the experimental value of 204 reciprocal seconds. When the concentration of the lock in ion is saturating, we see a rate of zero. And this is consistent as we as the barium is just physically blocked from moving further because there is always an ion bound immediately out uh, adjacent to it. So although we're able to rule out some scenarios based on the results and we've come up with a framework for describing barium blockades in terms of PMFs, we're still well short of quantitative agreement. For one, site S0 is not suffi sufficiently selective for potassium. Our calculated selectivity is only about two kilocalories per mole, but experimentally it's at least seven kilocalories per mole. Beyond that, the absolute binding free energy is too low for potassium to block per barium permeation at micromolar concentrations. We can contribute part of this to our use of non-polarizable force fields, and we're in the process of developing a polarizable force field that will be able to get this polarization effect correct. Beyond that, we've assumed that the lock-in effect has to occur when barium is translocating from S2 to S1. I think we have to seriously consider this the possibility that the lock-in effect is actually occurring at an earlier translocation step. To conclude, I'd like to thank our various funding agencies, particularly NSERC of Canada, which supported me with a postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Chicago, and a discovery grant that supports me as an independent scientist at the Memorial University of Newfoundland.